The definition of a paradox is a seemingly absurd or contradictory statement or proposition which, when investigated, may prove to be well-founded or true. I absolutely love logical paradoxes because they can wreak havoc with your rational thought. And so today, I've collected seven of my favourite logical paradoxes. Number one, the paradox of the prisoner. A judge sentences a prisoner to death. He tells him that he'll be executed one day between Monday and Friday of next week. The only condition is that he won't know which day he's going to be executed on. This means that whichever day the execution occurs on must be a surprise to the prisoner. Now let's put ourselves in the shoes of the prisoner for a minute and try and work out which day that the execution might occur. One thing that we know for sure is that the execution can't happen on a Friday. The reason for this is that if it hasn't happened from Monday to Thursday, then it will have to happen on Friday and therefore it wouldn't be a surprise. But the fact that we can rule out Friday also means that we can rule out Thursday because if it's got up to Wednesday and we know it can't be Friday, then it must be Thursday, therefore it wouldn't be a surprise. But then once we've ruled out Friday and Thursday, Thursday, we can also rule out Wednesday, and then Tuesday, and Monday by the same logic. And here lies the paradox. How can it be a surprise on which day the prisoner is executed? Number two is known as the ship of Theseus. Imagine there's an old, massive boat, a bit like this one, completely made of wood. Now, for the sake of the preservation of the ship, every day or so, one of the planks of wood is taken off the ship and replaced with a new one. This means that given enough time, every single plank of wood on the original boat will have been replaced with a new one. Now, imagine somebody collects all the planks of wood that were originally discarded and uses them to build a new ship. Which ship would be the original ship? Now, the first two can be quite difficult to get your head around, so here are some slightly faster, slightly more simple ones. Number three is about numbers. If I were to ask you what there are more of, either even numbers or whole numbers, what would you say? This is with whole numbers being one, two, three, four, so on, and even numbers being two, four, six, eight. Now, most people on first thought would say, well, obviously there are more whole numbers because whole numbers include even numbers. But if you think about it, the number line is infinitely long, meaning that there isn't a single largest whole number and there isn't a single largest even number. And because these number lines can go on for an infinite amount of time, Every whole number can be assigned an even number. 2 to 1, 4 to 2, 6 to 3, and so on. Because this can never end, the only conclusion that we must come to is that there are the same amount of even numbers as there are whole numbers. Number 4. Consider the following statement. Yields falsehood when preceded by its quotation. Yields falsehood when preceded by its quotation. If this is true, then it means that the statement yields falsehood when preceded by its quotation is made untrue when it's preceded by its quotation. But in the statement itself, it's preceded by the quotation. This would mean that the statement isn't true. But then if it's not true, then that means that it's not falsified, which means that it is true. And you can easily see how that can become circular. This is a slightly more complex version of the much more famous, this statement is false. Now I'm sure you've heard of that one, but it basically means that if the statement is true, then it must be false. But then if it's false, then that makes the statement true. And that again becomes very circular. Number five goes by many names, but I know it as the paradox of omnipotence. Imagine a truly omnipotent power. This is often used in reference to God, but it really doesn't matter in this circumstance. Could this omnipotent being create a rock so heavy that she couldn't lift it. Now this is a paradox of course because if the power can make a rock heavy enough that she can't lift it it would mean that she can't lift the rock so she's not omnipotent. Whereas if she can't make the rock well then she's definitely not omnipotent is she? And of course this is often used to naturally lead on to the question of whether there can actually be any kind of omnipotent power in existence. Nod nod wink wink. Number six is probably the most famous one on this list and it's known as the grandfather paradox. I'm sure most of you have heard of it but just in case you haven't imagine for a moment that somebody is to invent a time machine. He then gets in that time machine goes back two generations and kills his grandfather grandfather. This would mean that the grandfather could never give birth to the father that would give birth to the time traveller, which in turn would mean that the time traveller was never born to then go back in time and kill the grandfather. Again, it's just circular. Now most people just leave it there, but I think this is one of the most interesting paradoxes because there are actually multiple scientific explanations. My favourite would be the multiverse theory, which states that when you travel in time, you don't actually travel in time, you just travel into a different universe. Now I won't go into the specifics of the multiverse theory now, but if you're relatively familiar with it, you should know that it's basically a theory that says that there are an infinite amount of universes that are created every time an atom has to make a choice. And that means that there are universes that are vastly different from ours and ones that are very similar. The universe that you would travel into to kill your grandfather for some reason would simply be one that isn't as far ahead on its timeline as we are. There are a few more explanations which I could make a video about, but I think it's more fun to look into it yourself. Which, by the way, reminds me of a brilliant book recommendation. It's this book, Paradox, by Jim Al-Khalili, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's got some of the coolest paradoxes in it, like the Monty Hall paradox and the grandfather paradox, but it has scientific explanations for all of them. It basically smashes traditional paradoxes and shows that there are actually pretty rational explanations for all of them. Now I've got one more to show you, which is admittedly a bit more nerdy. This last one is known as the paradox of the twins, and it's actually also in this book. Now when Einstein theorized his unprecedented ideas about relativity, he discovered that as objects travel closer to the speed of light, they actually begin to affect time. Now I'm kind of hoping that you're familiar with this because I don't really have time to explain it, but if not, then you just have to take my word for it. Effectively, it's something that you will never notice in everyday life. As far as we're concerned, time travels at a constant rate and is unchanging. But believe it or not, the closer and closer an object gets to traveling at the speed of light, which is 300 million meters per second, by the way, 
it begins to actually affect the way that time flows. All that you have to understand for this paradox is that the closer an object gets to the speed of light, the more time slows down from its perspective. And I have to stress, although it is relative to the viewpoint, it's not actually a perception. Time genuinely slows down for that object. So I hope that you're either familiar with it or that you're able to just take my word for it. Now if you're interested in this theory, I'm sure that you've come across the idea before that if someone was to travel into space and travel near the speed of light, when they came back to Earth, they would be younger than everybody else on the planet. The reason for this is that time slows down for them, so they don't age as quickly from the reference point of the Earth. This means that when they come back to the Earth, everybody else will have aged differently to how they've aged. So now, imagine that there was a pair of human twins for some reason in the emptiness of space. And they just sat there, then all of a sudden, one of them turns on the rockets on its spacesuit and it goes flying off in that direction. Now these spacesuits are really advanced, they can actually make the twin travel pretty close to the speed of light. What this means, of course, is that as the twin flies through space, time actually slows down for him. And so if he comes all the way back and rejoins with his sister, he will have aged differently from her. Now, of course, this story has been from the frame of reference of the girl, meaning that the brother has flown off and traveled near the speed of light. This would mean that when the brother comes back, he should be younger than his sister. But if we think again about Einstein's theories, we know that all motion is relative. So from the perspective of the girl, the boy traveled at nearly the speed of light. But from the perspective of the boy, the girl traveled at nearly the speed of light. And so when they rejoin, who would be the older sibling and who would be the younger? Now again, because of course Einstein wasn't wrong about much, there's actually numerous scientific explanations about this paradox. So if you know of any and you have the time, go ahead and leave a comment on this video. Speaking of which, this is the end of the video. I've been Alex O'Connor, you can follow me on Twitter at AlexO underscore Connor. If you like the video, give it a like. If you dislike the video, give it a dislike, leave a comment, keep it civil, and I'll see you in the next one. One last thing. I recently hosted a quiz on the YouTube channel of a few good friends of mine. The channel's called Swish, and I'll leave a link in the description so you can go subscribe. It's a good laugh. Subscribe to me too.